Hey everyone, Mike here. As I said in last week's video, when it comes to designing dashboards, there are no hard and fast rules. And the same goes for trackers. Having said that, one thing that you often see on dashboards and trackers is progress against target. And how that's displayed is again down to the dashboard or tracker designer. For example, here I'm tracking personal savings. Maybe I'm saving up for a car or a wedding and by the end of the year, I'd like to have £10,000 in my savings account. At the moment, it's not looking good. And the red indicator tells me that I'm behind on my target. Here's another example, a list of tasks for a project. And as long as we know that green is complete, amber is in progress and red is not started, we can track the progress of each task. What I'm going to show you today is how to add an actual traffic light to your dashboard or tracker and have it automatically change colour as the numbers change. In a bid to get fit, I'm tracking my daily steps. I've set myself a target of 10,000 steps each day and I enter that number into C8. At the end of each day, I enter the steps for that day into the appropriate cell in row 4. The spreadsheet is full of formulas that calculates things like how many steps I've done in total so far this week, and the target number of steps based on the most recent entry. So for example, the most recent entry is for Thursday, and based on a target of 10,000 steps per day, I should have done 40,000 steps by now. As you can see, I'm a little bit behind. Rather than looking at numbers to work out if I'm behind or ahead, I thought it would be much more fun to display a traffic light which changes colour based on certain rules. To insert the traffic light, I'm going to go to Insert Icons. Now I'm using the Mac version of Excel so it opens up the icon panel on the right, whereas Windows opens in the middle, but I can actually move the icon panel to where I want it and then I'm going to search for traffic lights. I'm going to select this traffic light here and click on insert and close the panel. It places the traffic light at the top left hand corner and I will move it into the middle and resize it. The size I make it here isn't going to be the size that it will be in the finished version. I'm making it bigger so that you can actually see it. The next thing I need to do is to create the different colours. Now to do that, I'll click on Insert Shapes. And logic would say, use the circle shape. But I found trying to size and position the circle so it matches exactly the circle on the traffic light was a little bit difficult. So what I'm going to do is use a rectangle. Click on the rectangle and draw the rectangle out so that it covers the circle. And then I want to send the rectangle so that it's behind the icon by clicking on Shape Format and then Send Backwards. And you can see that it now does have the effect of filling the circle. If I move the traffic light, you can see that it is the rectangle behind it. Click back on the rectangle and change the colour by going to the Home tab and using the Fill Colour button, and I'm going to make that red. The problem I've now got is if I move the traffic light, it doesn't move the rectangle. So I need to group the traffic light and rectangle. And to do that, click on the traffic light, hold the Shift key down, and keeping it held down, click on the rectangle. And then click on Graphics Format, Group, group. So now this is one object and I can move it around. I need to make two copies of that object. So click on the object and copy, paste, paste. And then just move these out of the way so they're not on top of each other. Then click on the middle object, click on the rectangle and move the rectangle down so that it's covering the middle circle and set the colour to amber and do a similar thing with the third one. Select the rectangle, drag it down so that it's over the top of the third circle and change its colour to green. 
In order for the colors to change as the numbers change, I need to place those images inside cells. And at the moment, they are floating on top of the spreadsheet. So I need to convert them from icons or graphics to proper images, PNGs or JPEGs. And to do that, right click on the image, select Save Picture. And I'm going to save it onto my desktop and I'll call this one red. I'll do a similar thing for the middle one. Right click, save as picture and save that one as amber. And for the third one, right click, save as picture and save that one as green. And there are the three PNG files on my desktop. I'll then delete those images from the spreadsheet. The next thing I need to do, as I say, is I need to place those PNG files into cells. And the way I'm going to do this is to select insert picture place in cell, which I believe at the moment is only available to users on the beta insiders channel. But before I do that, I'm going to select the cell or cells that I want to place these images in. So I'll go to L1 and select insert pictures place in cell picture from file. Now I can select them one at a time, but I can also select them as a group. And the order that you select them is important. So I'm going to start with red, hold the control key down and click on amber and keeping the control key down, click on green. So I've selected all the images in the order that I want them to appear in the spreadsheet and click insert. I'm not going to worry about the size or the position of those uh, images in the cells because eventually that column L is actually going to be hidden. I'm then going to name the cells. Now you don't actually have to do this bit. It is optional, but it will make the formula easier that we'll do in a minute. So the first cell L1, I'll name red. I'll just go up to the name box here, type in red and press enter. Click on the cell with the amber image and set the name of that cell to amber and click on the cell with the green image and name that cell green. Whilst I'm naming cells, I'm also going to go to C12 and name that cell percent target. The reason I've named that cell is because that cell is going to be critical to the formula. I've now gone over to E8 and E8 is where the traffic light is actually going to go. E8 is going to contain a formula and what it's going to do is it's going to look at what's in C12 and depending on what's in C12, it will pull in the contents of the cell called red, the cell called amber or the cell called green, which is L1, L2 or L3. So I'll put equals if, if percent target, which is the name that I gave to C12. If that is less than 0.8 or 80%, then red. That doesn't mean put the word red in the cell. It means pick up the contents of the cell named red. Comma, if open brackets percent target is greater than or equal to one. So if it's 100% or higher, then green, which is the cell that I assigned the name green to, comma, otherwise amber. So it's referencing the cell called amber. And then I need two closing brackets because I've got two opening brackets. And what it's done, as you can see, is it's pulled in the contents of the cell called red because according to our rules, if it's under 0.8, if it's under 80%, it shows as red. I want to make that traffic light bigger. So the way I'm going to do that is to select E8 to F12 and use Merge and Center. So click the Home tab and click Merge and Center. I'm also going to set the background of that to grey. Again, you don't have to. I just want it to look a little bit different so it's not the standard white. I'm going to hide column L. We don't need that visible. And then to show you how it works, I'm going to go up to G4 
and type in 20,000. So let's imagine that I did 20,000 steps on Friday. You can now see that the percentage of targets gone up to 94% and it's changed it to amber. And on Saturday, I did 14,000 steps. When I press enter, that's now gone up to 102%, which means that it goes to green. Well, I hope you found that video useful. If you did, please give it a like. And if you're not already subscribed, please consider subscribing to the channel. If you'd like to keep up to date with what I'm up to, why not sign up to my weekly newsletter, which you can do at theexceltrainer.co.uk. But until the next time, have an excellent day.